Well, you know, it's three million lives sounds like quite a high number to me, even for, for New York. I think we'd have to look at uh, the medical evidence. We'd have to hear from the NHS some pretty, some pretty serious argumentation about that. This is now going to be for uh, local councils to proceed with if they, if they want to. I'm very grateful to, uh, to Lord Darcy. There's many more interesting, many other proposals in this report that I think uh, involve less bossiness, less nannying. Uh, less finger wagging than telling people they can't smoke in a uh, a vast open space, and uh, I'm going to get on with uh, with with some of those uh, championing exercise, uh, making sure that we crack down on illegal tobacco, championing London as the uh, the life sciences centre of the of the of the European economy, or indeed of the world economy, as we're rapidly becoming. Uh, there's all sorts of good stuff. In, okay, so in just, 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 just to stub out, just me, to stub me, out the for me, what I don't want to do, I want to campaign. I want to campaign against. Uh, against obviously, I think smoking is a is a is a scourge, and people should be discouraged from smoking. But I think actively to to ban people from doing something that is illegal in a big open space is taking bossiness too far. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction: you must stay at home. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. And use food delivery services where you can. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them to ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people in public, excluding people you live with. And we'll stop all social events, including weddings, baptisms and other ceremonies, but excluding funerals. Parks will remain open for exercise, but gatherings will be dispersed. The government is once again instructing you to stay at home. You may only leave home for limited reasons permitted in law. The full details of what you can and can't do will be available at gov.uk forward slash coronavirus. We will hold off step four openings until July the 20th, except for weddings that can still go ahead with uh, more than 30 guests, provided, pro provided social distancing remains in place, and the same will apply to wakes. Without a huge national effort to halt the growth of this virus, there will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope. And as we've seen elsewhere in other countries that also have fantastic healthcare systems, if too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to handle it. these vaccines do is they encode spike protein alone so that the immune system will learn to recognize spike protein and will catch it quickly when one is confronted with COVID. But the spike protein itself, we now know, is very dangerous. It's cytotoxic. That they didn't think that that was sufficient documentation of the risk that spike was biologically active. Right. Okay. They so, did not believe the spike was biologically active. So that was the big mistake. We now know the spike protein is, is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Is biologically. We active. also know. So if it was very dangerous, 
but it did what the brochure on these vaccines says it should do, which is lodge in the membrane of the cells that are doing the transcribing, it would be a lot less destructive, right? Um, I think that's fair. They were, they were aware that there was a risk of a spike being biologically active and having adverse events if it did not stay stuck to the cells that were transfected that got the RNA and made it. Revealing that spike gets cleaved off of expressed cells and becomes free is something that absolutely should have been known and understood well before this ever gotten put into humans. So I'll just leave it at that. We have no problems at all with mRNA vaccines. Right. It's just this particular vaccine, because of the spike protein and because it breaks, it cleaves off the cell and it goes throughout your body and your brain, your heart, and anywhere that you can have these symptoms that are so varied, whether it's a 16 year old who can't talk or see 48 hours after injection or, or someone who's, you know, handshakes or someone who's, um, you know, my carpet cleaner, uh, uh, Tim. He's like disabled now. He's lost $30,000 in terms of the, his costs, and he's going in for an epidural because he's in such pain. And so these and these well, side effects, the, the, the victims of this, of, of this vaccine, they're not being able to tell their story at the press because, you know, Tim says, I, I try to tell my story and the press ignores him. And we have to have full disclosure of risks. And when you censor that, you cannot have that. It change, yeah, it changes everybody's mindset into believing it's safe and, effect, and, and effective. And when you have that, you don't report these adverse events as being associated so with that's, it because you, right, you, you eliminate that's, that's it. That's you don't their, want to be the fly in the ointment well, of no, a great you, vaccine. No, you don't think yeah. it's possible, right? right? So when a doctor sees a, a miscarriage and says, I've never seen a, a baby like this in my entire career where it's so bloody and the brain is split in half and so forth. She's never seen anything like it. And she and and the woman was vaccinated a month ago and she's 25 weeks pregnant. When you have that sort of thing, the doctor says, well, it can't be the vaccine because the vaccine is safe. Well, and so they, they say, well, it must be a genetic defect. And they report it as a genetic defect and they don't even report it into the virus system. So we never see any of these safety signals because everybody is trained to think that it's safe. It couldn't have been yeah. the vaccine. So that's that's this group thing problem. So and, he, I, and I think we it is a real problem. If we go off the data that the Canadians provided to us from that package um, that shows the graph that you just showed, we have concentration in ovarian tissue of a novel lipid reagent um, that is previously untested and has some very unique characteristics. It's an ionizable cationic lipid. We just don't know what that means. And what we've learned is that reproductive risks don't always manifest in the first generation. So I don't mean to scare, but I do mean to speak honestly and with integrity. If you then ask me, has there been any examples in the past of uh, reproductive effects of agents in female reproductive tissue that were not anticipated by the animal model testing, I would have to say, yes, there is.